Hello, today we're going to do a new read and learn Psalm 91, Mizmor Tzadi Aleph. I'm going to move a little bit away from explaining every grammar part. I will mention all the grammar, but in less detail, and try and move more towards expanding your vocabulary by giving you examples of, of the vocabulary and keywords to help you remember. Yashev Beseter Elyon Betzel Shaddai Yit Lonan The root Yashav means to sit or dwell. It's here, it's in the participle in the present tense, and it's being used as a noun the one who sits or the one who dwells. The is a preposition, it means in. This root, satar, means to hide or to be in secret. And your key word for this is Esther. Esther's name is given as a Persian name, Esther, kind of resembling the pagan goddesses Ishtar or Astarte. But it has a meaning, her name has a meaning in Hebrew, the Aleph and then the satar. And so it can be either I will hide or I am hidden. So that STR part is the hiding part. Elyon comes from Al, which is on. Elyon is the highest on, it's the highest height. Buzz the preposition in. Tsail is a shadow. A lot of interesting related words to this word shadow. There's a video about that, it'll be in the description. Shaddai is usually translated as almighty. Uh, the word shed by itself can mean a demon. It can also mean the breast, and so that's where the almighty part comes from. The baby at the breast receives everything from his mother. Or it can be split, she die, the God who is enough. If you go to a Passover Seder, you sing Dayenu, it's enough, die. Yitlanan is a hitpa'el verb. It means really to spend the night. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, in the shadow of the Almighty, he will abide. Yoshev Beseter Elyon, Betzel Shaddai Yit Lonan. Omar la Yehova, Machsi umetsudati, Elohai eftach bo. Omar, the verb to say. This is in the first person imperfect, I will say. La is the preposition to. Yehovah, the name of God. Machsi is a refuge, and the root for this is Chet Samache. The mem is a noun prefix. The suffix e is my. U Mitsudati. U is and. Again, we have the t at the end, my. Mitsuda is a fortress, and you can remember this by the most famous fortress in Israel, which is Masada. Elohai is the word Elohim, God, and it is put into the form that means my God. Eftach, we discussed this root in Psalm 27, Batach, to trust. The Aleph prefix is I will. Bo is the preposition ba in, and the suffix o, him, in him. I will say to Yehovah, in English we have to add you are my, my refuge and my fortress, my God, I will trust in him. Omar Lehova Machsi Umitsudati Elohai Eftach Bo. Ki Hu Yatsil Cha Mipach Yakush. Midever Havot. K. 
key. There's a conjunction. It can mean because or something similar. Who is a pronoun, remember? Me is who, who is he, he is she. Yetzilcha is conjugated in the imperfect. He will rescue. This is a drop letter imperfect. The nun falls away. It's in the he feel. The cha at the end is you. Me is a preposition from. Pach is a trap or a snare. Yakush is a word that means fowler. What is a fowler? A fowler is somebody who catches wild birds. Again, the, the mem is from. Deber is a word that means plague or pestilence. It is from the same root as davar, which means to speak. This root probably needs a video of its own. There's a lot of words that come from this root davar. The idea here being that God can speak a pestilence into existence. Havot means noxious or perilous because he will deliver you from the snare of the bird catcher from the noxious plague. Ki hu yatsilecha mipach yakush midever havot. Ve'evrato yasech lach v'tachat kenafav techse tzina v'sochera amito. B is a preposition in, here is more like with or by. The toe at the end is his. Ever can mean a limb. In this case, it's translated as wing because we're going to see that we're talking about wings in a minute. Yasech from the root zaka, which means to cover. It's the same root as sukkah when you build a tabernacle, a sukkah during Sukkot. It is the same root to cover. It's in the imperfect he will. Lach is you. V is and. Tachet is a preposition that means under. How you can remember this is it comes through Yiddish as a pronunciation tuches, which comes into English as tush, literally your under part, the part that you sit on. There are two interesting uses worth noting. It can also mean instead of, in place of, and you see that in Genesis 22, where Abraham sacrifices the ram, tachat, instead of, in place of, his son Isaac. Some people say that actually Abraham burned both the ram and Isaac on the altar and Isaac was restored to life. I don't know about that. The other tachat appears when the people are at the mountain of Sinai and it says that they are tachat ahar. They're not under the mountain. They're at the foot of the mountain. They're at the bottom of the mountain. Although some people say that the mountain raised up into the air and the people were under it, and the mountain functioned as a wedding chupa. Kanaf is a wing. The suffix, it means that it's wings plural. They are his wings. And you see that in Ruth 3, 9, when she says, cover me with the hem, the border of your garment. The kanafav of the garment, the wings of the garment, are the place where the tzitzit are attached. Tehse is to take refuge as a verb. We've already seen it previously. Tzina is not a very common word. It means shield. Sochera is also not a common word. It's translated as buckler. A buckler is a smaller kind of shield. Amito is emet, truth, with the personal ending his, his truth. With his wings or feathers, he will cover you. And under his wings, you have refuge. You can take refuge. Shield and a buckler are his truth. Be'evrato Yasech lach, v'tachat kenafav techse, tzina v'sochera amito.
לא תירא מפחד לילה, מחץ יעוף יומם. לא is a negative particle, meaning no. The root for tira is yud resh aleph. There are a few confusing roots that that contain the letter resh and other weak consonants. You can check that video out. This is yud resh aleph to fear. The mem is from pachad is another word for fear. They are slightly different pachad and yareh. Yareh carries with it the meaning of also to be in awe, a reverent fear. Pachad carries with it the idea of trembling. Laila is night. The mem is from, again. And the word chetz is arrow. You might be familiar with the word chetzi, which means half. The concept of splitting something in half is embedded in the idea of the arrow. Ya'uf is from a verb that means it will fly. Of means bird. And if you go into a restaurant in Israel and order of, you will get chicken. Yomam from the word yom means day. Yomam, day by day. You will not be afraid of the fear of the night, of the arrow which flies by day. Lo tira mi pachad laila mechetz yauf yomam. Midever ba'ofel yahaloch, miketev yeshud tzaharayim. Again, the mem is from dever. We have already talked about ba'ofel. Ba is a preposition in ofel is thick darkness. Yahaloch is the imperfect form. It will, he will, wa. Usually it's treated as a drop letter imperfect. We would expect yelech or something like that. But I don't know, six or ten times in Tanakh it appears with the hay in it. It's, we can just say it's poetic. Again, the mem is from. All these things are afraid of, afraid of, afraid of. Ketev is destruction. Yashud means it will destroy, it will lay waste. Tzaharayim means noonday or afternoon. Maybe you're familiar with Aruchat Tzaharayim, lunch, the meal of noonday. We find this word in Genesis when Noah is building the ark and he has to build the windows, the light that's coming in at the top of the ark. It says to build Tzahar. It's related to the word with a Zion, Zahar also means light. The Zohar is a mystical, non-biblical, Kabbalistic book associated with Judaism. From the plague in thick darkness walks, from the destruction that lays waste at noon. Midever ba'ofel yahaloch, miketev yashud tzaharayim. Yipol mitzitcha elef urehova miminecha elecha lo yigash. Yipol is a drop letter imperfect. The root is nafal. It means to fall. Mitzitcha. Again, the mem is from. The cha at the end is your. Tzad means side. It is cognate to English. Sad, side. Elef, in this case, means a thousand. There is a series of numbers that go from one to ten, and then they kind of duplicate their names up to, there's a special word for a hundred, which is mea. 
and then there's a special word for a thousand. A thousand kind of circles back to the beginning. It's like the letter Aleph. U is N. Rivava is the biggest number there is, but it means myriad, like it's an indeterminate number. It comes from Rav, many, the idea of being mul multiplied. And there are videos about the numbers. Mi minecha. Again, mi from. Lecha at the end is your. In the middle you have yamin, which means right. From your right hand or from your right side. You know the word yamin from the name of Benjamin. Ben Yamin. He's the youngest child of Jacob. When he's born, his mother is in labor. She is failing. She names the child Ben Oni, son of my affliction. But his father renames him Ben Yamin, the son of my right hand. This is a prophecy. That child is a prophecy of the two comings of Yeshua, son of my affliction, son of my right hand. Elecha is the preposition El to Cha Yu. Lo is negative particle No. Nigash is also a drop letter imperfect. The root is Nagash. It means to approach. Vayigash is the name of one of the Torah portions from Genesis. He will fall on your side a thousand and myriads on your right side. Against you or towards you, he will not approach. Yipol mitzitcha elef, urvava miminecha, elecha lo yigash. Rak be'enecha tabit, ushilumat rishaim tir e. Rak means only. B is the preposition in or with. The cha at the end is your. The word in the middle. Ayin, inayim, eyes. Tabit is a drop letter imperfect. The root is nunbet tet. It means to look or to see. Vashilumat. The v is and. This is in the construct state. And if you're thinking it looks like shalom, it does. Shalom means peace, but it doesn't only mean peace. It means the completion of something or the fulfillment of something. In this case, we're going to say comeuppance. We're going to see, we're going to see what they're going to get. Rishaim, Risha is evil, this is plural. And this is the root Rish Aleph He. Again, one of those tricky Rish roots. You can look at that video about that. This root means to see. Only with your eyes you will look and the recompense or the comeuppance of the wicked you will see. Rak ve'enecha tabit ushilumat reshaim tir'eh.